What's up? Welcome to Film My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we bring you the inside tips on making great video. I have a squeaky chair, it doesn't matter. Today we're going to talk about simulating faraway audio. How to make something that's far away in the video sound far away, even if you recorded it with clean audio, which is what we're going to do today. Micah, do you have to go to the bathroom? Dude, I totally know when you have to go to the bathroom. You sure? There's a bathroom right up the hill. Go, quick, now. Come on. What's the matter? Nothing. Why'd you stop? I don't have to go to the bathroom anymore. So, first things first, I'm going to give you the inside tip of the quick and dirty version of this. And then afterwards, we'll do a little more advanced version. So people who want to just get the answer and get out, stick with me. Now let's talk about how we do this. First, we're going to talk about three different parameters to add to clean audio to make it sound far away. The first one is very intuitive. It's volume. So the further away something is, the lower the volume gets. Yeah, that's an easy one. The second one's going to be equalization. How does the sound sound when it's really far away? And the third is going to be we're going to do a little bit of reverb, reverberation. So let's get started with the first thing. First things first, let's do a little listen through to Micah's audio next to my audio in the field, the original audio. What's the matter? Nothing. Why'd you stop? Okay, so we really can't hear Micah. He wasn't mic'd at all. We, we chose not to use a wireless lab on him because he's going to end up yelling and it's still going to sound close. If you put a mic right next to him and he yells, it's going to sound close. So we opted out of that. We also could have used a boom mic on our camera, but for me, that would have picked up not only him yelling, but the whole world also. Now, if I tried to boost his level, I'd bring the noise level of the world around him, and that'd kind of be a mess to fix and post. So instead, we opted to do clean audio later and just get him uh, just yelling on the field to, to do the performance. In fact, we have um, a field recording that we had. We had a recorder running. Let's take a listen to that. It's not much better. So here's the field recorder. What's the matter? Why'd you stop? I don't need to go to the bathroom anymore. So it's still not really usable, not, not satisfactory to me. So what do we do? First thing we do is we bring Micah, we brought him back into, I brought him back into my office, and this is more of a controlled area. I have acoustic foam and a good microphone. I put him about six inches away from the microphone, then I had him repeat his performance as if he was yelling at me from a mountainside, yeah? One of the keys is the performance that he delivers has to match the action on the screen. So don't just act like you're yelling. You really have to yell. But I brought the gain down really low on the microphone so when he yelled, it didn't peak. And this is how it sounds. So this is Micah's raw ADR. Micah, what's the matter? Nothing. Why'd you stop? I don't have to go to the bathroom anymore. Great. So that's nice and flat. So we want to start off with a nice, dry, controlled, clean sound. Now I can start adding stuff to that. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure I get room tone. Now obviously we weren't in a room, right? We were out in the field. But I still want to get a recording of the environment so that when I mix things in to get together later, it sounds like they're all coming from the same space. Well, at least it helps, okay? What if you didn't record room tone? Well, I've done this a lot of times. Sometimes you can find some room tone in other takes. So there's a moment sometimes before the cameras roll where people are kind of quiet, or even when action rolls and the actor kind of sits and thinks for a second. You could steal three seconds here, five seconds there, and then loop that, and that'll work. But generally speaking, always try and get room tone. 
Oh, by the way, make sure all your tracks are separate, meaning my speech is going to be on one track in Premiere, and I happen to be using Premiere. These concepts will work in other editors. You just may need to translate what I'm doing to your editor, but they're all basically the same concepts. So my voice is going to be on a separate track. Micah's voice is going to be on a separate track. My sound effects, my music, my room tone, you get the idea. Try and put everything on different tracks. From there, I can use the Audio Track Mixer in Premiere. And if you haven't seen the Audio Track Mixer, if you go up to Window, and you come down to Audio Track Mixer, there it is. Now this interface is really cool because it allows me to control the volumes and the pan levels of individual tracks. And this is where the magic happens. Normally when you open this guy up, this isn't showing. This little arrow up here, Show and Hide Effects and Sends, boop. Now I'm able to add up to 10 effects or sends per channel, per track. In my uh, for my audio mix. And this is important. So check this out. Volume. We want to alter the volume. Well, we don't need the effects panel to alter the volume. We can easily alter the volume with this dial here. And in fact, let's bring Micah's volume down to about negative 6 dB because it's supposed to sound like he's far away. Let's check it out. What's the matter? Nothing. Why'd you stop? I don't have to go to the bathroom anymore. Okay, it's getting there, but he still sounds like he's really close to me. So let's play with the other parameter, which was equalization. Now, high frequencies have a little bit of a hard time traveling really far distances. Low frequencies are really easy. That's why you can buy a subwoofer, stick it in the corner of your house, and it's still effective. High frequencies, little, little problem going through a lot of distance. So, let's bring the highs down on Micah's voice so it sounds like he's further away. One easy way to do this is to go to his track, and I'm going to add filter and EQ, parametric equalization, equal, <laughs> parametric equalizer. Now, when I first click it, I add it, nothing happens. So I'm going to double click it, and now here's my interface. Don't get scared. This is really easy. The right side, the right side here represents the high frequencies. The low, the left side represents the low frequencies, and the middle, the middle frequencies. Quick and dirty once again. I'm going to use one of the presets. I'm going to come up to presets and choose generic low pass. And that will effectively drop that line. See how that line just dives down in the high frequencies? That means it's clamping down on the high frequencies so they don't come through. Let's just use that. Let's take that. Now you can tweak everything that I'm talking about to mold your sound to be the way it want, you want it to be. Let's take a listen. What's the matter? Nothing. Why'd you stop? I don't have to go to the bathroom anymore. It's getting there. In fact, it sounds really good. Um, by the way, I'm playing it with my voice and his voice because I want to hear how his voice sounds next to my voice. Try not to edit little bits of audio in a vacuum without hearing the rest of the mix. This will help you get the uh, tune the sound just the way you want it. Now, another thing we didn't use our room tone yet. So whenever I talk, there's room because I recorded room with my voice, but whenever Micah talks, it dies. It's like this vacuum of nothingness. So let's grab some of this room tone. I actually have a little sliver of room tone because guess what? I forgot to record room tone when we were out there. So I found some room tone in other tracks, and I'm going to duplicate this with the Option key here a couple times. Beautiful. A lot of Premiere people have seen this before. You've done this. All right, now let's check it out. What's the matter? Nothing. Why'd you stop? I don't have to go to the bathroom anymore. Wow, it's amazing how far some room tone surrounding your audio can really bring your audio into the environment. The last thing I want to talk about is reverberation or reverb. Please do not mix up reverb and echo. They are different. It drives me nuts when I hear people do that. Anyway, let's come back up to our track editor and we're going to add reverb, and we're just going to add studio reverb because that's kind of the simplest one that we have access to. I'm trying to keep this quick and dirty and simple. Double click, and we have all these neat parameters. But the only one I really want to look at right now is called the wet. Okay, And the dry level is the actual source sound. The wet level is the process sound. If I bring the wet level all the way up, the dry all the way down, let's take a listen. What's the matter? Why'd you stop? All we get is the wet. 
Now that's just an example. We're not going to actually use that. I'm going to bring this dry back up to about 80%, bring this wet down to about, I don't know, maybe 14.3%. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, let's take a listen. What's the matter? Nothing. Why'd you stop? I don't have to go to the bathroom anymore. I think that pretty much is it. I mean, there's a lot of tweaking you can do with those three parameters, but I managed to take his raw audio that's clean and dry and just void of space and make it seem like he's talking to me on a mountain, but he's still very clear, clearly hearable, like we can understand what he's saying. That's the quick and dirty version of this. Once again, volume, EQ, drop those highs, and throw a little reverberation. Even though we're outside, there's still going to be a little bit of reverberation from places. And if that's all you're interested in, thanks. Don't forget to check out PullMyFocus.tv for more articles and, and, uh, and videos. And thanks for watching. Now they're gone. Let's go into a little more advanced procedure. Now, what I'm going to do is show you what's called a convolution reverb. Now, we're still going to deal with volume and EQ but we're going to use a convolution reverb to create a more realistic simulation of an environment. Same deal, exact same deal. The first thing I do is I'm going to separate my tracks. I'm going to make sure I get room tone. But in addition to getting room tone, I went one step further, and I'll tell you about that in a second. We open up our track mixer. We have all our tracks separated into separate things, separate, separate audio. I have Micah's track right here. And so, I've done, the vo I've done the volume, I've done the EQ. Now I'm using convolution reverb instead of just studio reverb. Let's take a look at the convolution reverb uh, pick box. Now here I can use presets. There's all these neat little presets, cold house, back of the class, backstage area. The impulse, what's called the impulse, is an actual recorded space that the algorithm gets to use to create a new simulated space. Basically, when you're using convolution reverbs, you're using the recording of an actual space, a digital recording of an actual space, which creates a better, uh, more realistic environment than, than, say, just an algorithmically created reverb, like the studio reverb that I used. That's based solely on math. Convolution is based on what are called impulses, which are basically just sound files that it uses in the process. I went one step further. You can use these. These are all presets. Locker room, massive cavern. But you can record your own. And that's what I did. I went out on the field and I recorded my own convolution reverb. And there's ways to do it. Quick and dirty ways. They're, they're, they're more advanced ways. I went the quick and dirty route. Basically, I set up my audio recorder in the space. I hit record. I waited for it to get nice and quiet. And then I made a really loud noise. I, for me, it was just clapping my hands together. Some people, they'll pop a balloon or something like that. And you bring that back into the studio. And it looks something like this when it's edited. There's not much there you can see, but here is the clap. And then the rest of this file is just the, the, the clap and the environment after that. Because I have about two seconds, almost three seconds. Double click my convolution reverb. And now, instead of using a preset or an impulse, I'm going to hit load. When I hit load, I'm going to go to my audio sound effects. There it is. My convolution sample from the area. Boom. I'm pretty much done. All I need to do now is control maybe the volume, but let's just take a listen to how it sounds just like that. What's the matter? Nothing. Why'd you stop? I don't have to go to the bathroom anymore. Once again, this reverb is now using the actual space and mixing Micah's voice in, creating basically what sounds like the actual space once again. Convolution reverb is an amazing thing. I think it was brought over from uh, Audition into Premiere. It's amazing for helping you take separate tracks of clean audio and putting them in an environment so they all sound similar. That's about it. Same, same procedure, volume, bringing the highs down, and a reverb. The quick and dirty is just a simple reverb. The more advanced is a convolution reverb. And you're all set. 
Check out PullMyFocus.tv for all our articles and videos. Leave a comment. Let me know different ways that you come up with creating far audio or if a convolution reverb is something that's brand new to you and you don't even know about it. Thanks for watching. See you guys.